Okay, it's 1201, we'll get started. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching from. Welcome to the fourth in our series of informational webinars being presented by the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. Today's topic is uh, financial services and cybersecurity. I'm uh, Mike Henderson, Senior Director of, in, uh, of Business Investment for the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. And I'm joined here by my colleague, Linda Tepaleski. Linda, you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, thanks, Mike. Welcome, everyone. I'm Linda Topoleski, the Vice President for Talent Strategy and Programs for the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. Uh, we're part of the Allegheny Conference, for those of you that know us by both names. And our primary purpose is to really attract business investment to the region, help businesses start, expand, and grow here, um, as well as to attract the talent that we know is the core fuel for all businesses today. So we have a dual purpose here, and we're going to talk about the impact of both of those in the fintech and the cyberspace today. Thanks, Mike. Um, while we're uh, putting the slides together and, and showing the slides, if you'd like to put into the chat box your, who you are, where you're from, that'd be great. We have a Q&A button also. If you have questions that you'd like to ask, please put those in and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So let's get started. So this is Pittsburgh. Uh, we're an iconic city, home to people, places, enterprises, foundations, startup, university, and more. Uh, and we're open to innovative people and companies excited about their growth and what they can do here. For those of you who aren't well aware of where we are, we're in the southwest corner of, of uh, Western Pennsylvania. We are uh, within the 500 mile radius of most of the major cities in, in the uh, east and northeast, including New York, Washington, Chicago, and even uh, up into Toronto, which is within uh, an hour's flight from here. The region, we cover a 10 county region in the Southwest Pennsylvania area. Uh, we have a population of 2.6 million, so it's a pretty large area. Workforce about 1.3 million. Uh, we have a large millennial population, almost a half a million. And our median home price is of 155,000, which is a very affordable location for people who want to own a house. And there's a lot happening in Pittsburgh. We're now a leading innovation hub and, and we have a lot of startups here. We have an ecosystem to help support those startups. We're have, we have an expanding financial services cluster for top location for STEM professionals, especially because of our universities and all the technology companies that are here. And we're a growth market for the creative class. We have a, a, a downtown and, and fringe neighborhoods that are really attracted to the creative class. So we're looking for more people to come in and, and companies to come in to, to uh, take advantage of all these advantages. So we've gotten a lot of accolades and a lot of uh, recognition in the press uh, for our, uh, our livability, for our costs, for the job, uh, job availabilities, for food, uh, for uh, living in the future. So you can see some of the, the uh, accolades and some of the rankings we've gotten uh, pretty high up in a lot of different pu publications and rankings and so on. So we're, uh, we're excited about that. We're getting recognition around the world for what we have going on here. So in terms of financial services and cybersecurity, uh, they're really intermingled because if you have financial services, you're basically getting into a lot of technology and cybersecurity is one of the key factors in, in, in financial services, protecting assets, protecting client accounts and so on. So uh, beyond uh, the financial institutions that we have here, we have a lot of firms based on uh, cybersecurity. We have the in educational institutions as well that are helping to promote that, helping to build up the workforce that, that is dealing with these issues. On the financial services side, we have uh, corporate and financial community are, is really large. Uh, we've been a big hub for the region for 150 years, uh, serving manufacturers, technology companies, energy industry, the life sciences sector, which are all big parts of the economy here. 800, eight Fortune 500 headquarters are located here. And we have over 800 other headquarter locations here. So we have a big corporate community here. In terms of financial services, we're home to two of uh, Pennsylvania's largest banks. Head PNC Financial Services is headquartered here and FNB is headquartered here, First National Bank. 
Um, we have nearly 29,000 uh, individuals employed in financial services, not just the banking sector. We have another 25,000 or so in, in things like insurance and related industries. Uh, First National Bank, and I'll get into them a little bit in the, in the, in the, in the next slides. Uh, they're uh, going to be the anchor tenant in a new 26-story uh, headquarter building to built on the edge of downtown near the near the arena where the uh, the Penguins play. And this is a, a aerial photo of the downtown. It's the point where the Monongahela and the Allegheny Rivers meet to form the Ohio River. Most of our big banks are located in the downtown, right in the CBD. Uh, First National Bank that I just mentioned is on the north side, and they're going to be moving to the new headquarters uh, building on the edge of downtown when that's when that building is completed. So most of the financial services, the larger banks are located in the downtown re region here. So companies in the financial sector are, are in a good financial company. BNY Mellon, which was a, a merger between uh, Mellon Financial and the Bank of New York. Uh, there's a joint headquarters, one in New York, one in, in Pittsburgh. Uh, they've increased their, their workforce here from 1,000 to about 7,000. And they're currently really the largest uh, employment center for BNY Mellon uh, in their global footprint. First National Bank, I just mentioned, they moved from uh, a, a more rural location down into Pittsburgh. They've grown tremendously. And as I mentioned, they're going to be uh, the, the lead tenant in that uh, brand new building going up. PNC, our biggest uh, financial services uh, business, one of the largest in the country. They're in almost all the largest metro markets of the country. They've been growing uh, through acquisition and expansions. Uh, and their uh, tower at PNC Plaza, the headquarters building, is a lead certified platinum building, one of the greenest office buildings in the world. And another large bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, they opened a regional office here uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, they are planning, they've opened up some new branches here and they're explain, expanding those branches and they're expanding their office here. So we, we have a great representation for many of the largest financial sector, services sector companies. I uh, mentioned some of the others here, Citizen Bank is large presence here. Dollar Bank is based here. Huntington Bank is a, a large facility here. And I also put in some of the insurance uh, related companies, the health insurance companies like Highmark, UPMC Health, Gateway Health, United Healthcare. It's all part of the, the regional financial services sector. In terms of uh, uh, availability of, of uh, labor and what their costs, uh, these are some of the typical occupations in financial services. And as you can see on the right hand side, uh, the Average wage rate, the mean wage, uh, is typically below the U.S. average, from five to ten percent, even fifteen percent below the U.S. average. So, a very cost-effective location for for uh, financial services uh, facilities and operations. Also, on the uh, the real estate side, on the cost side, the office real estate, we have about ninety million square feet of office inventory in the region, eleven point eight percent vacancy rate. And on the quoted asking rate right now, as of the end of uh, 2020, was $25.58 a square foot. So considerably cheaper than a lot of the other large financial centers around the country. And there's another 1.9 million square feet of, of uh, office space being constructed. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a, we have all kinds of, uh, of office space available. A, the, the available space is about 11.5 million square feet in the whole region. And we also have a lot of industrial and flex space uh, for companies that want to uh, have uh, additional operations other than just office. Companies coming here, Numo, this is a uh, independent subsidiary of PNC Bank. They are, they sponsor, uh, they innovate, uh, uh, help companies innovate and they uh, make uh, um, investments into some of those smaller companies. Uh, a couple of years ago, they launched Indy. It's a smart banking project for the gig economy. Pineapple Payments was founded here uh, to provide payment processing. Uh, they are growing and uh, they're right in downtown Pittsburgh. SAP came into the region. They purchased a couple of uh, local Pittsburgh firms. They are now hitting a move in, move, have moved into a new headquarters on the north side and they've nearly doubled their regional employment. So. Another uh, great success story for Pittsburgh. 
And on the cybersecurity side, uh, we have about 40 cybersecurity firms. They employ a total of about 1,000 people. Uh, they are supply, uh, providing support for all kinds of industries, not only finance, but robotics, life sciences, manufacturing, you name it. Uh, everybody needs cybersecurity in some way or fashion in their industry. Some of the companies building it here, Hornet Security, this is a German-based company. They were founded in 2007, growing fast. Uh, and what they did when they wanted to open a, a U.S. office, the first place they came to was Pittsburgh, and they've been established in Pittsburgh since 2017. Blue Bastion, this is a Pittsburgh-based company that offers managed uh, solutions for ITs and networks. They have data centers uh, where they help provide uh, uh, security for uh, incidents and, uh, and uh, um, hacking and all those other kind of things. They try to... Uh, not only identify them, but also to mitigate those impacts. Proofpoint, this was a company based in Silicon Valley. They came into Pittsburgh by purchasing Wombat Security Technologies, which is a well-known firm based here in Pittsburgh. Uh, they now have an office here um, in, in Pittsburgh. So they've also been growing. They're in cybersecurity prote protection for email, social media, and mobile devices. Illumina, this is a consultancy in cybersecurity based in Pittsburgh. They provide advisory services to help clients assess their security risk, identify solutions, and manage the other uh, aspects of cybersecurity. Linda? Thanks, Mike. So in talking about anything having to do with Pittsburgh and leading edge, the first place we have to point is to our universities. Um, one of the most important assets we have here in terms of the depth of R&D, the breakthroughs that are coming out of them, the industry partnerships, um, and also the talent uh, and the startups that come out of our universities. And talking about cybersecurity, um, what some of you nerds out there may know, may not know, is that um, Pittsburgh is actually the birth of the first virus, uh, the first computer virus. The ninth grade uh, enterprising um, young student who developed the Elk Cloner and put it onto floppy disks that he was exchanging with friends as they were gaming. And that naturally led to you know, developments in how to prevent these uh, viruses from happening. And one of the most significant developments on the, the threat assessment and information security space was the uh, beginning of the Software Engineering Institute here at Carnegie Mellon, and then also the CERT program, uh, Computer Emergency Response Team. Um, and they've been moving the industry forward ever since in terms of working with um, on the, the political spectrum, industry spectrum globally for threat assess assessments, uh, information assurance, um, and developing um, really standards um, in this industry. And so from there, things have really grown quite a bit. And it's not just at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, next slide. Um, so, you know, we have a multiple academic anchors here um, where not just breakthroughs in cyber are coming through, but also in, in many other fields, in, including um, in the financial services area. In fact, um, some of our graduate schools um, in financial services um, are you know, nationally renowned and, and world renowned as well. Um, but speaking in the cyber area, because obviously in financial services, privacy, protecting customer data is extremely important, um, really across any sector. Um, everyone's trying to protect customer data, student data, patient data, uh, and prevent any other kind of incoming threats for competitive purposes. So a, a lot of the um, R&D that's happening around that front is happening uh, at Carnegie Mellon, at the University of Pittsburgh, and also at the FBI here, um, some of you may not know, the FBI opened its first office here in 1914 um, and really is the, the core of its threat assessment and cyber crimes unit um, and has developed a training alliance with Carnegie Mellon um, and a number of other um, uh, areas that they're focused on having to do with uh, election security, human trafficking um, and privacy concerns. And so we really have a network here of some of the best minds in this field working together across academia, across industry uh, to move this field forward. Go into a little more detail uh, on the next slide here with Carnegie Mellon. 
Um, as I mentioned, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Software Engineering Institute um, and the CERT program. Um, CMU is also the number one graduate school in computer science uh, in the country, number two for undergrad, uh, just behind MIT, but it, you know, close enough, uh, one of the top two schools in the country and, and well known around the world. Um, the Scilab program um, is, is well known uh, for, for concentrations in cyber ops and forensics. Um, and some of this is being married with AI, um, policy, other areas that all come into play um, as you're looking at cyber, and especially if, if you're looking into it for things like financial services where compliance um, and, and um, other uh, weights have to be applied to what you're going to invest in protecting your data. I already did mention about the CERT program um, and the, the training alliance with the FBI. Next slide, Mike. Um, and so interestingly, just down the street, a couple of blocks at the University of Pittsburgh, um, we have really a unique combination with the Institute for Cyber Law Policy and Security. Um, the University of Pittsburgh has the, the School of Computing and Information, as well as a law school and graduate programs in public policy um, and international affairs. So it's in a unique position to put all three of these together in an, into an institute and draw from the expertise um, in all three um, in terms of putting together R&D programs um, and helping to formulate policy surrounding um, uh, cyber. We also have um, a number of smaller schools, the Pittsburgh Technical College, Robert Morris University, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, that um, have pretty deep, strong cyber programs as well. And so one of the advantages for companies starting up here or expanding here is that you have easy access with the size of this city, with the size of this region, you have easier access um, for industry partnerships, for development, easier access to talent, to professors. Um, so it, it makes for a more conducive environment um, to grow your company, but also if you're working in the field and looking to expand or you know, looking to expand your own horizons, um, the thickness of opportunity um, and really the, the core of where breakthroughs are happening is in the Pittsburgh region. And speaking of talent, um, for, for those that are here representing companies looking to expand, um, next slide. Um, we have a pretty strong workforce of about 1.3 million. We have 234,000 students in our talent pool, some of them from tier one research institutions, um, some of them from you know, really renowned four-year schools, also two-year schools, um, and um, technical training programs as well. Um, some of you may have also seen the recent announcement last week of Perschoolis opening up shop here to start training um, diverse talent into um, shorter pathways um, into technical fields. So we're continuing to build our pipeline from a number of means, um, but as it is right now, we have a, a pretty strong pipeline of talent coming out of the universities, but also in our existing workforce. Uh, in financial services, we have over 50,000 people working in financial services. Um, in, in the cyber area, um, it's close to 10,000 when you look across all sectors. Um, essentially, most job postings in software and IT these days have some aspect of information security as, as a required skill set. Um, and so we, we do have a growing uh, uh, talent pipeline there as well. If you're a company looking to expand, it's easier to access talent here, and they tend to stay longer at companies. If you're a candidate, a professional working in the field, a student getting out, this is a great place to be. It's, it's kind of a right-sized market um, where you can meet people pretty easily and you can see who the players are and get access to players more quickly. Um, so it has advantages on both sides, whether you're looking to work here or looking to hire talent here. And speaking of here, um, next slide. So uh, the Pittsburgh region is really a place that um, people enjoy living here. Um, right now, it's something like 75% of the country is covered in snow uh, phenomenon. Um, but so if you're looking at winter, um, we're a four seasons uh, kind of a community. So right now with, with the snow, you know, we've got skiing, we've got cross, downhill skiing, cross country skiing, boarding, ice skating, um, a, a lot of outdoor hiking on our trails. Um, we're a four seasons kind of a um, community 
where you can enjoy something um, year round um, with our outdoor amenities. Next slide. Um, we have uh, a lot of public parks in the city. Everyone is within 10 minutes walking distance to a park. Um, 400 miles of hiking, biking trails, which are active year round. Um, we have an organization, Venture Outdoors, that organizes hikes, organizes bike trips, canoe trips. Um, so we really make active use of the land and the water here and the topography. Um, our, you know, everyone's is sort of in semi-quarantine still, but um, you know, we still have a very active restaurant scene. And what's interesting about Pittsburgh with our cost of living here and our cost of doing business is um, we had a lot of chefs who um, left maybe two 2010, right around that time frame, trained in other markets that are well known for their cuisine, Paris, New York, LA, um, and then came back here and opened restaurants. Um, some of them have been James Beard nominees. Um, we have, you know, we've been recognized by the New York Times, several other um, restaurant critics. Um, it's really having um, a, a pretty, you know, fast growing um, food scene. And part of that is because of those chefs who've been able to open restaurants. Um, we have a, a restaurant incubator, Federal Galley, um, that helps chefs to, you know, learn marketing skills, real estate, cost, et cetera, while all working together in the same incubator state space to try out new, um, you know, small plates and, and some of their specialties on a larger crowd than they'd be able to get on their own. So we really are trying to support this growing restaurant scene and especially coming out of this pandemic. Um, there are a lot of efforts here to support local businesses, support local restaurants, as there are, you know, uh, around the country. Um, but here, you know, we have organizations like the Pittsburgh Downtown Partnership, um, who are really putting strategies into place and resources into place to really help the restaurant industry come back um, coming out of this pandemic. Next slide. Um, many of you are aware of or may not be aware of, um, like many towns, um, you know, we have a pretty intense sports culture here, especially for professional sports, but college level too. Um, we have four D1 schools um, playing football, soccer, lacrosse, etc. Um, and the, of course the um, Pirates, Steelers, and the Penguins. Um, those of you who may have visited here before but don't live here, pretty much know um, there's a, a quote from the late Howard Cosell, a football announcer that when you play Pittsburgh, you play the whole city. And that's true. Um, on normal sports weekends, pre-pandemic, if you came to town on a, on a football weekend or even on a hockey weekend, um, you can bet that you're gonna be inundated with sports fans um, who take it pretty seriously. Next slide. Um, and so, you know, where are the hot spots? Where does all this occur? Well, you know, we are a 10 county region. So we have amenities across, um, you know, 10 counties across Southwestern Pennsylvania. But a lot of the, the hub for those activities is really our downtown and, and nearby areas um, where we do have, you know, a lot of museums, Broadway shows, the restaurant scene, um, but a lot of interesting, um, well, the Andy Warhol Museum is here, world renowned, the Mattress Factory, City of Asylum. There are um, a lot of interesting, small, cool little places, but um, part of what makes them so interesting is they're so accessible. You, if you drive, you can, you can get to the downtown area from most suburban places in you know, 15 minutes or less, cheap parking, cheap tickets. It's not like some other larger markets where it's a hassle. Um, you, want to, you want to engage in it, but it's, it's, there's a lot of friction to get there. Um, Pittsburgh's easily accessible and really affordable. So you can um, really enjoy more life here um, uh, you know, outside of work. And lastly, um, so we invite you all to um, drop you know, your contact information into chat, any questions you might have in the Q&A or chat. Um, you know, and we're happy to go through and, and answer any questions you have and, and uh, you know, open up um, to further any of these discussions. Um, I know we got a couple of questions in advance um, when people registered. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and ask one or two of those now and, um, and then we can go on from there. So um, one of the questions I think for Mike would be, um, the financial services companies in Pittsburgh, are they mostly homegrown or they've entered, have they been entered via acquisition? 
And have there been financial companies that have cited new facilities in the market? Yeah, uh, a lot of the companies in the financial sector are, are homegrown. They've been, been in Pittsburgh for many years. Other companies, such as the banks, I mentioned JP Morgan Chase, Huntington Bank, they have come into this into the market here. Uh, we've also have some smaller companies that are more technologically oriented, like a firm. It's a San Francisco-based um, financial firm that uh, opened its first non-San Francisco office or its largest non-San Francisco office in Pittsburgh a couple of years ago, and they've grown here. They're on the north side. Uh, and they've been a great success story and great uh, uh, addition to the to the financial sector here in the in the region. Okay, um, we also have a question that looks to be a, just a direct question to you, Mike, which we can follow up with on email. But just to let everyone know what it is, and maybe you could give a general answer. So it's it's an international trade rep um, from a European country asking whether um, you set up help cybersecurity companies that want to set up an office in the U.S. and do we facilitate? So this is probably a good general question that you can answer uh, broadly, and then we'll, we'll uh, connect. Yeah, we, we, uh, we provide a, bunch, uh, a lot of services and um, things that, especially international companies that come to the market, they want to know, okay, can we connect with a law firm to help us get the company set up and established? Uh, do you have an accounting firm we can use for taxes? Where can we go? Uh, what kind of space, what kind of office spaces are there that we can go into? What makes most sense for us? You know, where's the, uh, can we help make connections with universities or schools for talent and so on? So we can provide a lot of those kind of services and, and uh, uh, we work for uh, uh, the PRA. It's, it's a nonprofit and we don't charge for our services. So everything we can do uh, is all at, uh, at no cost to the client. So we're happy to, Talk to companies, especially the international companies that want to enter the U.S., and we can uh, help out in a lot of different ways. Okay. Um, so a question for me, I guess, it's who is hiring? Um, lots of companies are hiring here. Uh, basically, every company is hiring if it has anything to do with uh, software engineering. Um, but in particular, um, Bosch is hiring. They have 30 open positions right now I see on their site in the Pittsburgh market. Some of them are for interns. Um, the FBI is hiring. For the first time ever, I saw a billboard um, on a highway the other day from the FBI looking to hire cyber talent. So, um, but those, I'm just throwing those out. But I urge you all to um, go to our page on LinkedIn. Um, if you're a student, you can go to our Pittsburgh Passport Network page. Um, we'll invite you in. Uh, where we do post a lot of intern positions. Um, and also um, there's um, This Week in Jobs that is put out by Innovate PGH, um, a lot of technical jobs on there. Um, Rust Built uh, also uh, lists local jobs. And so those are more direct, smaller routes rather than going the Indeed, Monster, and, and Career Builder links um, or routes. But um, those are just a couple of of options as well as nextpittsburgh.com. Uh, so there are um, daily and weekly openings listed in all of those sources. And then feel free to email me as well, um, send a resume. We often make direct connections uh, for talent that, that's looking to uh, find a new position. Um, there's another question about other incubators that are good options for startup and cybersecurity. Um, so we have a number of incubators in the Pittsburgh region. Um, a couple of them spawn from Innovation Works, which is the largest seed stage investor um, here. And they, um, one of the incubators is Alpha Lab, um, and that's more a software, Internet of Things, um, Internet, and then Alpha Lab Gear, um, which is hardware, robotics. Um, Ascender is another incubator, um, and there are a few more that are forming, um, some in a nascent stage, some that are um, you know, doing a number of things, but we do have a number of incubators, but what's good about this community as well, as I mentioned earlier, it's a right-sized community, so it's easier to connect with the whole ecosystem that you need to start a company here. Um, one person will connect you to another, to another, that's, that's kind of how Pittsburgh is. And so you'll find a community that's welcoming for a startup and um, really willing to introduce you to the players early on. We want startups here. We want startups to grow here. Um, and so every, everyone's pretty eager to jump on board and, and help new startups. Um, there's a question about the regional employment trend in the last few years in the financial sector. 
um, if you want to take that one, Mike. Yeah, um, it's really kind of split between the, the banking sector, which has been relatively flat, slow growing in the last five or so years, but the insurance sector has, has grown um, by a, a fairly a fairly healthy uh, percentage. Uh, so combined, uh, the, the, the sector is growing. There are companies, especially in the insurance field, the healthcare insurance field, that are growing here. And like I mentioned, a couple of the companies that are coming from outside the region to set up banking operations or back office operations in the financial sector. Any other questions? So um, we do have this deck available. If you want to go ahead and just drop your name into chat, um, I think we will be doing a follow-up with um, participants. Um, so you should be get, getting an email from us. If you do have any follow-up questions or want to set up some time to chat, we're happy to do that as well uh, and make the deck available to you uh, and go deeper on any of these topics. But if there are no other questions. Thanks very much for watching. And uh, please let us know if we can be of help. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.